friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a case of i will drop the case was done elsewhere one of my colleague has referred this case to me my plan is to remove the intraocular lens that has dropped into the vitreous cavity and place a multi base lens in the sulcus because i found that the sulcus can support the multi piece lens very nicely so here it is this is peritomy for about 3 clock hours from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock and now i am going to do bipolar weight field cautery so that i can have a uh, nice dissection so that dissection becomes easy so here is bipolar weight field cautery very mild cautery just to remove just the blood vessels and the scleral surface is not charred just and this blood vessels will grow very fast within few days new blood vessels will grow and here it is my plan is to make a tunnel of about 6 mm this is the measurement because i'm going to implant the multi piece lens and remove a lens which is a foldable lens so it will be very easy if i make an incision of 6 mm to implant the lens and to remove the lens so here this is the corneal scleral tunnel since the main aim is to introduce the intraocular lens the internal opening need not be larger than the external opening of the tunnel so here it is this is the completion of sclerocorneal tunnel now this is a small peritomy to raise a conjunctival flap beneath this flap i am going to place the irrigating cannula this is uh, this flap is in the infero temporal quadrant of the eye and now the this is a trocar which is piercing the sclera about 3.25 mm away from the limbus about 3 to 3. to 5 mm away from the limbus and i'm going to place the irrigating cannula onto this trocar now this is another trocar in the suprotemporal quadrant same 3 mm away from the limbus and this is another trocar the supranasal quadrant 3 mm away from the limbus and now vitrectomy light pipe goes in anti vitrectomy is being done this is the, we can see the vitreous strands very clearly this is a 23 gauze vitrectomy cutter and now this retinal surgeon use 25 or 27 gauze cutters but 
this is not a regular surgery for me uh, this is a central mirror uh, central irrigating contact lens you can see only the central part of the retina you can see the intraocular lens which is resting on the posterior pole so I'm doing a nice vitrectomy to make the eye well free from the vitreous so that when I lift the intraocular lens the vitreous doesn't cause any traction onto the retina now my plan is to do some vitrectomy in the anterior chamber because I saw in the slit lamp that there is some vitreous strands which is going to the main wound which is at around 11 o'clock so here I do some vitrectomy just behind the posterior capsule and this is a, a thorough vitrectomy and now I'm going to come out and I have asked for tramsinolone acetate so that I can see the vitreous strands in the anterior chamber very nicely so I'm going to make some side ports this is a side port at around 10 o'clock this is another side port at around 3 o'clock and now I am going to introduce this molecule this is tramsinolone acetate this molecule gets attached to the vitreous strands and the vitreous strands stand out you can see the vitreous strands very clearly you can see these are the vitreous strands which are, which are going to the main wound so I am going to use this cutter now to remove these vitreous strands irrigation is not enough so I am going to use irrigation also from another side port at 7 o'clock and here it is all the vitreous strands are nicely removed the people has become really small at this time I'm going to open the wound I'm going to open the sclerocorneal tunnel through which I'm going to pull out the intraocular lens and through the same wound I'm going to implant a multi-piece intraocular lens in the sulcus And now I go again, do some more vitrectomy. And now I go Here I ask my assistant to place the contact lens 
use vacuum to lift the intraocular lens. Two times it fell down. The third time I could hold it very firmly and between two instruments I could introduce the cut it through the haptic of this lens so that it can may not fall again. And now at this time I stop irrigation and inject visco in the entry chamber. Stop irrigation, inject visco, and now I use a MacPherson's forceps and by the left hand I hold the septic. and pull it out. And now I'm going to place three iris hooks through the three side ports. 10 o'clock, 7 o'clock and 3 o'clock. You can see the Rex's margin very clearly and there is enough lens, uh, enough capsular support for the multipiece lens. We will see that in a moment. As I pull this, you can see the Rex's margin all around. Now here goes the lens, multipiece lens. Since the wound is 6 millimeter, it goes straight Irrigation is on. The leading haptic has gone into the sulcus and now the trailing haptic. And here I place the trailing haptic also in the sulcus. And now remove all the iris hooks. This is the hook at 3 o'clock. It is removed. The silicon guard is retracted backward. The pupillary margin is unhooked. And the hook is pulled out. And now, the job is not yet done. So, irrigation is on again. And now, I'm going to see if the intraocular lens is nicely oriented or not. Yes, it is nicely settled. Now I remove the trockets and the sclerotomy wounds are closed. I sutured the sclerotomy wounds because it was not self-sealing. I have used nino nylon to close these sclerotomies. If we use very sharp trockets and if we 
make the incisions more oblique probably we don't need to put sutures but this one this irrigating one was self sealing as I pulled it out this wound closed and now I used a releasable suture to place the conjunctible flap at its original place the conjunctiva is nicely opposed and now I used a shoelace suture to close the main wound the first bite comes through the groove to the posterior leaf of the main wound then this is another bite this is one more bite this portion of the video is three times the uh, two times the normal speed so the shoeless suture is very good Though this is a sclerocorneal tunnel, it is always better to close the wound nicely with a suture because if the wound leaks, then there is more chance of infection. And now this is a final lavage of the anterior chamber. Everything looks nice. And now I close the main wound. The knot goes into the wound. So the knot is not exposed. The knot goes in the group. Now the threads are cut very carefully. We must not cut the knot. This is a uh, releasable sutures. Uh, no, this side it is not releasable sutures. This is a X suture at this side. The right side. Now I'm going to oppose the conjunctiva. it is done now one more suture on the uh, left side of the peritomy left end of the peritomy and this one is going to be a releasable suture The side ports have been made by the keratom in such a way that it will not require any suture. Little bit of conjunctiva has been taken in the side ports while making the side ports. And this is the last suture. At the end, this is intracameral moxifloxacin. I have some post-op pictures after 24 hours. The cornea is clear.
there is very mild corneal edema intraocular fissure is 14 mm of mercury antechamber is quiet and vision is 6 by 24 unaided with pinhole it comes to 6 by 9 it's a great outcome and the patient is very happy thank you very much for your attention hope this video will encourage you to take up challenging cases